uh, all right, so let's come back to uh, let's come back to the project real quick. Ah, and we get I love this this hallway effect. It reminds me of a high school video project I made back in uh, 2001. Uh, no, no, it was the year 2000. <laughs> all right, cool. So we got some sliding moving around and this shot. Oh man, I like this shot a lot. I'm gonna make this uh, this a little bit bigger so you can see the picture a little bit more. Um, yeah, oh man, that's just it. Just looks so pretty. Um, and uh, so, just this past weekend, the developer Ross Turner showed this the the game at the uh, PC Weekender event. I believe that was in London. I know it was in the UK. For pretty most major events in the UK are in, the, in London. So, um, uh, yes, now you're starting to see me drawing into another build. Now, this is where. Uh, I think this is one of those kinds of shots where the actual intent of the game becomes really abundantly clear to anybody familiar with Dwarf Fortress. Uh, Dwarf Fortress is uh, unfortunately a game I still haven't played, um, but once you see uh, the dwarves building a fortress in a mountain, you're kind of like, oh, I get the why it's called that now. Um, in this game, I like how fast it is to map out the plan into the mountain. And you just kind of let it go, and you can see as in the footage, the the excuse me the um the the town folk are moving very very well they they paused at this moment uh, let's see I, I accidentally hit a button um the town folk are moving very quickly you can see the passage of time you can see the leaves falling off the trees but you can see the progress that they're making throughout the mine now this to me is probably one of the most uh the bigger uh cultural selling points within the game. Uh, I really, really, really like this element. This is going to be probably a time lapse. This is definitely going to be a time lapse sequence. As you can see, I don't have any of the camera movement. Um, I don't have any of the, the overarching flow that you saw before, and you see some of the, the day to nighttime transitions. Um, I, I added some of the, the beautiful green lanterns in there because they, oh man, they just, they create this this lovely, uh, this lovely ambiance. Um, oh, and this is where, this is where in, in the build I'm actually uh, remembering uh, to only make one little uh, square uh, tile um, at the, the the entrances, so that I remember that if you because if you make a wide open entrance, I couldn't quite make a figure out how to make a door for these larger sections, and I'm pretty sure you're supposed to make a nice little tiny entrance. Uh, for the doorways into the mountain because I know in a fantasy world if I saw a big giant gaping doorway into a mountain I would think well if I built that that will cost a lot so <laughs> uh, to keep things cost efficient and practical you just want to make a single tile doors are for the best um, and you will see towards the end here oh it's fall time again so this whole year cycle has gone through here um, but you're seeing the the dwarves kind of continuing to build and I set some of the lanterns out Ah, man, this is so pretty. I love how this game looks. And so these are the kinds of... Ch oh, no, I forgot that. Uh, sorry, I uh, I moved... I accidentally moved the camera, so I might have to talk to Ross about creating a, a camera lock uh, so that if I accidentally start moving around uh, during a build for this, this long time... Uh, time... Um, lapse process that you don't have the problem that I'm going to have once you see me jump to the earlier timeline. You see there's a little, little tiny bit of a jump. You can't see my fingers, so I don't know why I'm putting it at the screen. Um, between uh, here, see, sorry, right here and right here, there's a little bit of a jump in the placement. Um, I can fudge that a little bit in, in the actual timeline. I can zoom in a little and and fudge it, but I don't, I don't really want to mess with that. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, this is the first draft. It's just to show intent, just to show the kind of shots that we're going to have in place um, and make sure that we're going with something that's nice and, and working. Um, I'm going to move this up a little bit here, and we're going to make a nice... Uh, th this is just... This, this is like the cake and gravy. This is something that I can work with. I can do a ton of things with um, this particular point in the timeline. I'm just going to set a nice little marker in the, that particular clip there, just so I remember that this is a beautiful moment. This shows the the lovely the lights, the the nighttime effects, um, the characters that you can see all over the map, um, and hopefully this sparks the imagination for um, creating and crafting a colony that, um, yeah, it, it it sparks my imagination, and I'm not really into into crafting and and uh, 
uh, creativity based games. It reminds me a little bit too much of this workspace. <laughs> um, but this this here, um, yeah, there's something special about it. And so we want to make sure that this has a special spot in the trailer. Unfortunately, when you're this far away in a trailer, it's kind of like that's that's nice to see the overall, but I'm not gonna, I don't know that I'm going to be working at that distance uh, in the player's mind. So we're going to get into uh, a lot of closer moments. You're going to get these these nice uh, overall progress runs. Um, and I like, yeah, here's a nice sweeping pan. Um, I think in the shot I tried to hide the the mouse cursor, um, which is symbolized in the in the darkness with um, uh, a nice little lighting effect. In the meantime, I'm just going to kind of jump back into things, just kind of give a quick refresher. So we looked at the uh, the fourth night cuts sequence um, the sequence the, the, se the sequence of cuts in the trailer that I'm calling the night the night cuts and we see a nice little pan to the right and here's nice fixed camera perspective where we are showing the progression and the overall development of all these shots here so we're gonna clip that a little bit and see how that turns out. Alright, this is a nice pan and this over here is going to be a nice transition to uh, Hyde Ross who's communicating with me and I'll get back to him more directly once the stream is over. Uh, let's see, so this should be fine. What's up? What am I looking for? I'm looking for this to make sure. It says, it says I'm on, uh, it says I have uh, number oh, ooh, it says unstable, poor network connection detected. Oh my. Um, it says I have zero, uh, zero bit rate right now, so that's uh, really bad streaming health. Um, says that I've been on for, I guess, is that 38 seconds or 38 minutes? I'm not really sure. I am not used to Twitch. I'm not used to all the things that go into it. Um, gonna hide this again and just keep going. Uh, let's see here. There's a nice sweeping pan. And cutting over to this. Oh, this is a diagonal pan. This one's pretty good. Yeah, we got nice wintry nighttime. You can see all the dwarves bringing massive amounts of stone. Yeah, that's probably about where that shot's gonna have to stop because it doesn't doesn't necessarily get more interesting as you get further into them. Actually, I guess around here is where it starts to get interesting again. So we'll just let that. No, I changed some camera directions. That's not good. Uh, yeah, this there's too many course corrections happening on screen for this to be useful. Uh, let's just jump down to this here where it gets. That's way too fast. Let's see, press play. Ooh, that's actually nice. Yeah, some daytime pan. Alright, let's check to see how this stream is responding. And it still says uh, zero kilobytes. Okay, so whatever's happening, uh, this is not watchable and not usable. So I apologize for anybody who's trying to watch this on stream. I think I'm just going to close that and stop the stream button. And, but I'm not going to stop recording because I still feel like this could be useful um, and interesting to watch. So we're going to let it just kind of slide. Um, I'm going to go back over here to uh, this footage. And this will just have to be uh, recorded uh, footage. And that's okay. Okay, so we have our daytime activity sliding across here. Um, Alright, there's where the actual pan starts. I'm going to clip this earlier footage. Yeah, look at that. You see him dragging some stuff over in here. You see the, the darkness of the mines, the lights inside, and you see some of the dynamic lighting effects. Oh, you see some of my, 
I see some of my mouse showing up there. That's that's not good. I guess we'll just stop the cut there. All right. Yep. Hey, that looks nice. That's a nice zoomed out shot. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. Let's see if this stays this stays usable. Mm, some mouse footage, some camera tilt, and mm, doesn't look like it's that useful. So we'll just keep going, speed up the timeline a little. This downward pan might be useful. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, very nice. Shuttle backwards a little bit. Okay, we'll let that run. Actually, you know what? I'll move that edit, move that edit down. We're starting to forward. I'll start that upward pan again. Uh, there's some camera mil movement there, so that's not useful. Right there's good. That's nice. Zooming in, oh, this is to great. This could be interesting, I like when that activity around that lighting on that dwarf on the top right, right up here. You see them moving still around, you can see stuff happening in the mines. Yeah, that's good, yeah, that's useful. I can trim out. I'm going to make a special note of this section here. Save the project, make sure we're saving the progress. Actually, this right here is not bad. Let's see them moving out of the mines. Moving to the massive stockpiles with lots of different kind of ore and gems inside. And that's where the camera gives up. And it's the end of our cut. Oh, here's where the night nighttime comes, the lights come out. I'm trying to get a nice close up. Oh, this is where um, just this is a shot specifically set up for for uh, motion graphic text. Uh, so what that means is that um, it's probably a pretty boring shot, um, but just to make sure that you are feeling like you're in the world while the, the camera moves around and creates a framework for, uh, you might put some text up here, actually that would probably be pretty perfect. Some text right up here while these, these guys are moving around. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I'm actually going to make it so that it starts right around here. I'm going to make that cerulean, because that's the color that I use. It's just my personal code for something that I'm going to use for motion graphics. And there you have the overall shape. Oh, this is actually the, the shot before that one, where you can see the way that I was carving out the mountain. And I got some wide sweeping pans. Night stock pan. Let's create a gap in here so we know these are... Separate shots, night stock, night, night stock, night mine close, night map, build, yes, that way I know those are separate kinds of shots. And there I have the, I had a little UI element in the bottom there. Let's make sure that's gone for the shot. Nice sweeping pan. It's a nice nighttime transition. You can see them chopping down trees in the winter. See, oh, what well, that one tree filled on, that was actually really nice. Hmm. There's no movement on the camera, so it's, yeah, actually. Camera starts moving right here, so we'll see if it's 
not the most interesting shot, but I don't like moving to the left, but we'll save that just in case. There's where the pan starts again. Come on. See the overall settlement. That's nice. Shuttling double speed. Here's where I think I started. Diagonal pan downwards. Mm, yeah, you start to see the mouse cursor show up on the screen right around there. Yeah, I'm high on the cursor. You can feel like you get the whole settlement. Everything looks nice and happy. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, this one's a nice far away shot. Problem is that once you get this far away, even on my nice machine, the uh, frame rate starts to chug. So I'm not sure if this is gonna look that great. Actually, yeah, everything's playing really smooth. I sped up the frame rate so you can see the progress that the dwarves are making with the digging. And this is another time lapse. This isn't a pan shot. So I'm going to start right around here. And we're just going to go. Oh no. There's some camera moves. That's not good. I'll go to where the camera stops, starts moving. And. Oh, this is where I decided that I should put some extra elements into the scene so it looks prettier. Oh, there's where we put some doors on, or I realize I don't know how to put on doors on the larger entryways. And then I think I add some lights in here. And we let the motion settle back in. Try to find the right shot. It looks nice, but shot doesn't have oh that's where I have mouse cursor riding past oh, so I did some pans that's what I did here okay so we can we can work with some pans yeah you see the mouse cursor in there I think that that's actually useful in this case uh, but I'm going to set this as a separate shot concept because I think that the, the transition, the cutting across, might be a little bit better. Oh, whoops, the overall timeline just lapsed. situation is a little bit more clear because it's clear that the player is looking for where to put the door and just looking around thinking I like that and that's in this case of course the player is me so we're gonna call that right there sweeping pan of pretty fleshed out settlements so that you can see how far away everything can get um, and that and that the, the role of the player is still evident so even though it's super far the, the sort of tactical view if you will is clear and they are panning the other way I don't know that I'm gonna have any use for that yeah it doesn't it doesn't do much for me all right cool so there we go, I think those shots are pretty well lined up. This one is going to be a time lapse. We go from there to there. Eh, it's not that impressive. But you can see some night, day and night cycles with a little bit of progress. 
this is the real time lapse all the way back here and you can see it goes all the way from there to there to digging stuff out and that's nice I like that a lot cool actually you know what I'm gonna organize this a little bit here put these two time lapse sequences back to back uh, just in case I want to use one like one or the other I can I have reference on how they both work uh, and time lapses can work pretty well in trailers if you use them just right they're tricky all right so then we have the climax cut section um, let's see how we're doing on time I just want to make sure that the stream or this particular recording isn't going too long um, it's got 15 minutes in it so far okay so cut back over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is the last, this is kind of like the last section, and I don't know why having some really nasty camera stuff happening on this footage. I think I saw that in the source material, and I thought that maybe it just was being w wacky, but no, it's showing up in all the footage. It's not going to be useful footage might not work. That's, that'd be very sad. I know that each game, each kind of capturing process has its own nuance. Um, and it could just be that there's too much data from all the things that are going on in the scene. But yeah, the, definitely this, this footage isn't... The zooms on this at least aren't, aren't working as much as I would like them to. Which is sad. But I do like seeing the overall settlement. And that looks like it's working okay, except that there's some weird flickering going on. Not sure why. You see me see that I drew up some plans over here for where I plan that settlement to go. I like the super far away look of things, but I'm not sure if it's useful. I'm not sure if it's my capture tools that was causing the problem or whether it was the game. So many different factors. Alright, we have this. jitter in there is no good because I may have lost all of those shots which would be very sad I might have to I wonder if the performance it's a performance issue because I'm recording in lossless format which I might have to try uh, accelerated format to see if that works better <sighs> yeah this is too jittery none of this stuff is going to work It was really sad because this was this looked really pretty. This is definitely the most attractive settlement that I've made. But it's unfortunate that the cameras or something within the system is jittering. This time lapse looks like it's working though. See if mark this in, mark that out, just render that sequence and see if that solves anything. If it's still jittery, then there's nothing that I can do. Okay, that's done rendering, and we get to see that there is still lots of jitter. Yeah, there's weird jittery things going on in there. The lights doing strange things and camera. Oh man, I don't understand. It didn't look like that while I was playing it. Something happened on the capture. It's the only thing I can figure out. Okay, no problem. Just re, -re, -re record it. And I will get back to you on that.
and that's a good spot to stop for now. Um, as you can see, all that time in all that time, I just basically ended up with these uh, completed sections. This one I can mark as uh, complete with uh, the selected cuts. Uh, and the next step would be, of course, to turn this all into an actual draft. And I'll have that available shortly. Um, in the meantime, I will be getting back to Ross. And uh, this is my stream starting soon screen that I have not really had any need to use. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed uh, this sequence of events. And uh, yeah, I'll hope maybe we'll do it again. Thanks.